The 6-5 Summit is here. We are actually in New York City at the NASDAQ for a conversation talking about the future of AI. And I've got none other than Durga Malati. Durga, Qualcomm, 40th anniversary. We are here at the NASDAQ shooting the 6-5 Summit video. Um, first of all, welcome back. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Yeah, really, it feels nice to be here. Yeah, it's great to be looking out the backdrop of New York City. You know, a lot of the big <laughs> shows that I think all of us watch, uh, CNBC shot right in here. That's right. Uh, the backdrop, it looks like it was a great day. I, I had a few minutes to attend the 40th uh, anniversary party. But you've been with the company, I don't know, nearly three decades now. You've been through the CDMA era. You've been through 3G, 4G, 5G, 6 G, should I say? Well, it's getting not there. been through, but you're getting there. Talk a little bit about kind of what it was, has been like to be part of this company, this culture, this evolution, and uh, you know, kind of what the journeys looked like so far. I think Qualcomm, uh, as a company, we kind of symbolize what it takes for uh, just a bunch of smart people coming together and taking on challenges which seem so impossible, but then by the time you get to it, then you just keep moving on to the next one. Our uh, evolution as a company, back when I joined, uh, yeah, it's my 28th year, so it feels quite uh, both humbling and uh, kind of uh, I'm in a reflective mood, just in terms of thinking about 40 years, uh, is quite a journey for us in Qualcomm. But, you know, one of the nicest and the best things in Qualcomm is the ability to innovate and reinvent ourselves every so often. And I've been through several of those reinventions of us. So it feels quite something. We started off as a wireless communications company, uh, we still are, but we've added so much more since then. We've been so many generations of wireless technology. And at some point, we gradually transformed into a high-performance computing company in addition to wireless communications. So here we are, uh, 40 years later. Uh, it's been quite a ride and quite a journey. Now you're really becoming a compute company. I mean, uh, you talk about you know handsets, yeah, part of your business. IP, part of your business, of course, but like, you know, uh, Autonomous, uh, you know, vehicles uh, and ADAS, a big part of the business. Uh, models and on-device AI become a big part of your business. Can I talk about that journey because you have a big remit around AI now. That's right. So you're doing a lot more, but you're really a computing company now with a pretty impressive AI story. So take me from the radio and mobile to this kind of era of compute and AI. There is an analogy in history that as you start, you know, the transport uh, was no longer. Uh, the question anymore, yeah, we could go to much higher data rates, but the natural question was, well, what are you going to do with all that data? And uh, the natural thinking back then was, well, you've got to have a reasonable amount of computing in a phone. Back then it was still phones. And that was the first time we said, okay, we've got to start getting into, it's got to be high performance, but also energy efficient computing, because uh, you have to make it work in a phone, and if you can make it work there, you can make it work anywhere else. That was the beginning of our transformation into a computing company. And gradually, as we invested more and more into it, for the next few years, we invested heavily into all the peripherals, not just the processors, but multimedia, camera, video, display. And when it all started coming together, I think the next time we then started thinking about it was towards the birth of 5G, like in 2016, 2017 timeframe. And he said, we've got to take it to the next level and not just relegate ourselves just to smartphones, but go from there into all the other industries. Automotive and PCs were the one of the first ones that we started thinking about, and gradually on top of that, we started layering in XR and IoT devices, consumer and industrial IoT. And we've, if I just look back in the last eight or nine years, oh boy, we've come such a long way since then. And the third, I, I would argue, uh, in terms of high performance computing, our transition was as we were paying attention to, in addition to data processing, well, how exactly do you do that? And there are other ways of actually doing that processing using AI. And around that time, we decided, okay, we have to be in a position to bring in AI into devices, into devices, because you can always run it on the cloud and that will continue to improve, but we wanted to make sure that it comes into devices. So about five years back or so, just two years after the transformer networks came in, we really started looking at how do you bring generative AI into devices and look around you today. Between AI PCs, smartphones, infotainment, or as we call it, digital cockpit inside an automotive, uh, 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 you know, any kind of an uh, automobile. Uh, ADAS is a natural extension from then onwards into automotive. Both of them heavily involve AI. And these days now we use AI in 
in every kind of a device that we can think of. And uh, that's been quite a journey. So at this point in time, as we started looking at, okay, what's, what comes next? Uh, very recently, uh, we then um, started talking about data center. Because all the lessons that we've learned with high performance and energy efficient computing uh, with AI, we decided, yeah, it actually all those attributes make sense in data centers as well. So the last two, three weeks have been extremely busy for us between uh, the Middle East and Computex and a lot of the announcements that came in from there. So we are very excited. I'm personally extremely excited about our next journey into this, uh, into this era. I'm still a little hung up on the comment you made about what are we going to do with all this, uh, this data, right. you know, and, and, and going back years. It feels like that's a bit of the, the theme that we as a society have. Right now, with the same questions being, what are we going to do with all these data centers, right? You hear about all this <laughs> capex and all these um, servers, right. and then you, you know, hear about, and, and I think what happens is, is innovation kind of, we, we build the, it's like the, it's the roads and the, it, it's, the, it's the pipe, right, to create growth, and then all of a sudden, innovators come in behind the developers, the, the ones that created the app ecosystem. I mean, there was a period of time, like I'm sure when you're thinking back to like 3G and these phones, That's right. and nobody knew an app ecosystem was going to come, and now the, it's just become totally, you know, part of our, it's ubiquitous right. with, with, our, with our lives. But I, I want to just double click a little bit, because you have made this impressive transformation. I've documented it a number of times. Um, talk about it pretty perpetually, because I sometimes think it's, it's misunderstood. I think sometimes Qualcomm doesn't get enough credit. Um, some of the areas I think is one is, you know, the diversification journey that you've been on. You diversified into compute, but then you diversified into the auto space in a big way. I mean, nearly $50 billion of design pipeline. You've made a big leap into the edge AI for, for industrial right. use cases. You had a partnership with Palantir that you announced. But I still think that one of the biggest opportunities, Durga, is actually going to be bringing like XR and IOT, all those things come back to life with edge data and AI. And you seem to want to play a really big role. And now you're also, like you said, you kind of quietly said it, but you're also getting into the data center. So, so you know, you go back 10 years, you're basically a handset company. Now you are a handset and IP, but you're also PCs and devices, you're XR, you're automotive, um, you're the edge data, which obviously even naturally takes you into robotics. So, you know, the TAM is growing. It feels to me like, you know, maybe the right way to ask you this question is, what do you think are the things that you really, the market maybe it doesn't fully see and appreciate about all the great innovation that's being developed at Qualcomm? And what do you kind of hope the market is able to see over these next couple of quarters and, and years? I think uh, for the longest period of time, Qualcomm has always been known as a, as a wireless communications company. And effectively, it's about connectivity into all kinds of devices around us. I still feel sometimes that, of course, people like you and a lot of others actually do recognize the fact that we've transitioned, a very successful transition, into a computing company in addition to communications company. But I think there is still something else that is not fully understood. Uh, there is an association of Qualcomm with smartphones. Uh, they continue to be a very important part of our portfolio, but we are so much more than that, especially with PCs. Uh, uh, XR devices and IoT devices will keep come back to automotive. It's a place where that's not a, these are not uh, like PCs for example, it's like a really mature industry at one level. But then the fact that we were able to come in and bring in AI based PCs, AI algorithms running inside your uh, inside your PC without necessarily you know uh, going back to the cloud and you can always use connectivity to, to complement what you're doing. That's a place where I think uh, there's a lot of analysts who are aware of it, but the market is gradually sitting up and taking notice and saying, okay, wow, I mean, there's a bunch of AI PCs out there. Uh, that's still a story that still continues to evolve, uh, I would say, and I, I spend time actually explaining ourselves beyond smartphones. The same thing, by the way, watch out for XR space, because uh, when you think of XR, you think of some, you know, the, back in the day, there were these goofy looking glasses that someone would wear. That's not the case anymore. You know, today you can actually walk into a store and get a pretty good Ray-Ban glasses, which look no different from your regular ones, except there's a camera in it, there's a microphone in it. You can take voice calls, you can actually, the other person can see what you're doing. This enormous amount of processing that actually is needed to get it there in a form factor that looks like an XR device. So that's quite, quite something actually. And I think people will be surprised to see how, how far we've come and how much Qualcomm has permeated into all kinds of devices that you might not necessarily associate us with. 
and switching to uh, when I go into industrial and consumer IoT devices from wearables to industrial equipment, it's all about AI processing. There's so much of data, especially domain specific data that's out there, but the algorithms make the devices so much smarter. And it's quite impressive to see the applications coming in in the industrial sector. You know, that's been a specific portfolio of ours where the growth has been very slow for the longest period of time, but with the injection of uh, generative AI and AI applications overall, it's come along a long way. Automotive, uh, I think we've, right back maybe seven, eight years back when we started splitting, uh, how we thought about automotive, we, we said, okay, first there's the digital cockpit, this is the interface between the uh, driver and what's around you, that's just the basic interface, and there's so much of AI, voice activated, uh, uh, processing that occurs. You can actually point your finger like this and say roll down this window and then it comes down. There's gesture recognition along with uh, uh, infrared sensors which are inside the vehicle that can do this. It's quite something by the way. All of that processing, once again, done by Qualcomm. Uh, I think in that space uh, people are waking up to the reality that we are there. And so I almost feel like this is a story that we'll continue to tell about ourselves. Not many people have paid attention to, but the quiet thing that we did, we said, hey, by the way, we are now getting into data centers. That is going to be a place that I think people should watch out for. Because high performance computing normalized by energy efficiency is going to be a very important attribute as we go forwards. Tons and tons of data to process. Energy is at a premium. So low, uh, low power based high performance computing is key for us. I 100% agree. We need to get more efficient. The energy race, the AI race will follow it. And so if you can only solve it two ways, build more energy, which is complicated and is going to take a lot of time, especially if we want to do it clean. And the alternative is build more efficient architectures, which is something that Qualcomm has long specialized in. That's right. Durga, I want to say thank you for making uh, your 40th anniversary, with, uh, not yours, but <laughs> Qualcomm's 40th anniversary, part of the 6.5 Summit this year. I see significant TAM expansion. I see a path into so much more than even what Qualcomm's doing today. I look at things like you know robotics, which all this so logically fits, and I see a, a strong path. And of course, we'll be watching very closely how this evolves in the data center. We know in terms of low power connectivity at the edge, it's something you already do well. Let's chat again soon. Um, you know, and have a great rest of the, uh, the celebration here in New York City. Always a pleasure, Dan. Thanks for having me. And thank you, everybody, for being part of the 6.5 Summit here. Lots more content for you, kicking it back to the studio or wherever you are to join us for the next session.